Good morning. Many thanks for joining us for another episode of Off the Press, a program where we'll take a look at all the headlines in the newspapers and try to make sense of it. But I'm not doing this alone. I have two people with me, very distinguished guests. We have um, Tubosu Ekeju, Reputation Manager. Thank Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And of course, we have uh, Ifi Oji, Policy Analyst. Pleasure to have your company this morning. Hi. Thank you. (laughs) All right. um, We'll start with the Punch newspaper this morning. And a big one here is on community policing. Um, It goes, FG constables won't get salary. It's voluntary. That's according to the police. You find details on page two. That's it on your screen now. Uh, We also have recruitment, not for the unemployed, but for professionals, for PRO. All right, we have other headlines there. 18 states was hit about poverty. That's a new report. If you've been following the news, you probably heard it moments ago, but our guests are here. They will help us uh, make sense of it. And that's according to a new report by AFDB. Akira Dolu to meet Buhari over Amotek today. And then Demurage, price increase looms, importers besiege Sun. That's the standard organization of Nigeria. Budget under threat as oil prices sinks to $54. That's uh, another one for you on the front page of the paper. We have more headlines. Of course, the picture on the front page has to do with the clash yesterday between uh, Okada riders, uh, Keke drivers, and the police. The caption this morning is Okada ban. Scores injured as policemen riders clash in Lagos. You see uh, pictures depicting what t- took place at the scene. And then uh, Basaki writes f- IG demands of Shomale's arrest prosecution. <clears throat> That's another one uh, on the front page. We'll come to all of these uh, headlines, um, other headlines in a bit, but let's start with the two big ones. Let, let, let's just begin with the one from yesterday before we go to the constable uh, matter. I'll start with you. Um, thank you very much. The Okada ban, um, I think, is one thing that I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit unhappy and I'd say, I mean, disappointed about the approach that the Lagos State government has taken. Um, I want to clear this thing. Are you not happy with the ban? Or are you, it, you think that they should be banned, but the process and the method in which so, it is So there's a, there's a law already. Um, there's a law already that says that on certain roads in Lagos, you cannot ride bikes under 200 cc. And so it's just an implementation of an existing law. But you see, you have to be very careful when you've allowed certain things to foster after a while, and people have built systems and their livelihood around it. Um, as a sensitive government, when you need to now come and implement that thing, you know, or that law, you have to do it systematically. The question, I've asked myself a lot of questions since this ban came into effect, or since they've announced that it was going to come into effect, that number one, have we done a proper impact analysis of taking out a very significant part of legal state transport infrastructure, even if it is not well structured, if it's not a well organized one, have we done the impact analysis? What have we put in place to um, to, uh, as a, um, to, to, to reduce the shock it will cause in the system? Um, where's the pilot of what has been put in place? So you um, you, you 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 place a ban on uh, something that takes care of maybe up to like 20 to 30 percent of the transport system in a cosmopolitan city like Lagos and you introduce uh, maybe 65 buses and 14 ferries have we tried have we tried to you know what I constantly say on this program policy marketing to say that people have to change their lifestyle are we doing route planning you know I was speaking to my technical partner yesterday and I was like the solution to this problem is not very difficult is you can use technology, you know, to do route planning. Average, a lot of us now have smartphones. So it's a matter of saying, where do you have 
influx of traffic. Where are the major stop points? So for example, my office is in Lekki. You can almost already know where you have pockets of people standing to pick. So have you done route planning to say at every point in time, how many people are standing there? Am I to deploy more buses to this place to take people and ensure that people are not stranded? But wouldn't that, wouldn't that delay the process? So, yeah. let's, let's so, drink. So, so, yeah, so what I think, about, so I, I agree with him in the sense that yes, there are obviously portions of this grand plan, the rollout plan, that wasn't well thought out. But, in, but you mentioned the thing about uh, the pilot. That's what Fashola did within the Ikeja, uh, within Ikeja GRE during his own period. Yeah. You also mentioned uh, the idea of them doing the route planning and all of that. At the end of the day, right, we know that this law has been in existence. Ignorance of the law is not a defense of the law. I agree with you. So, but my own issue with the law is, as uh, Felicity rightly said, is that we are not really thinking about how to uh, put the plan in process, you know. I understand that, I've read both, I've read the law, and I find that it is actually pejorative if you are an Okada rider. If you own a, a, a motorbike which is with over 200cc, which is significantly more expensive mm -hmm. than the tuk-tuk or the Okada that we know of, then you are I put it at an at at immediate advantage. Yeah. So you are actually finding a way to victimize in, in, unbeknownst to you, unwittingly, the uh, majority of the uh, income earners within that transport industry. So the, the law that we are referring to right now is the Transport Sector Reform Law. It was actually done, if you look at the history of it, it was done in consonance with the Bus Sector Reform Law. So they actually did want to put these things in place. Yeah, it's just that, unfortunately for them, they, they are, I think they've got caught between a, a rock and a hard place because they, want, they don't want to obviously um, put... Uh, Investor-heavy uh, businesses such as you mentioned, Max Edot NG, Gokada, uh, Ride, and which is part of the um, larger o OP um, machinery, Chinese machinery. But at the end of the day, we have to also uh, make sure that we don't we don't sort of uh, do undo the good work they are trying to do in terms of and just you know completely. Uh, okay, let, let me quickly ask you this question yes. about the riot, the, the protest okay. yesterday. Okay. Uh, some persons say we are mostly reactionary, <clears throat> excuse me, that after a while mm. we will accept what is and move on. Do you see this protest as transient, something that will fizzle out on its own while people will adapt to the situation? Or do you see a sustained resistance to uh, the ban? Okay, okay so, let me... Let me. So, 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 uh, again, from um, short term and long term, effect. yes, maybe we'll get used to it. Nigerians were very elastic, we'll find a way around it. You know, we'll move on, we'll find alternatives, which is what we usually do. But let's look at the ripple effect of this problem. What have we done to invest the convenience? You know, last week, um, IMF said that one of the problems with development and investment in Nigeria is instability in policy in policies. You did mention that there is a law, a transport reform law that was in place. Someone yes. has gone to build a business, definitely doing due diligence before investing in that business to see that your business is around the law. The government wakes up one day and turns it over its head immediately, not properly you know, you know, looking at, okay, if I'm going to even, you know, do this, do I want to go the route of changing the law and saying that this is the new thing that we've done or just placing the ban? You know, I keep saying it that I think we're military hangover. The, we agree that there's a security problem. We agree that there's a public health issue. You know, we have a lot of accidents from bikes and all of that. But like they say in Yoruba, you don't have to cut the head to solve a headache, <laughs> which is, you know, so you have investor confidence that you're going to have to deal with. You've I put ad chip so much in the people. We will get over it, but will the investors just really quickly, get over just, it? May I, may just may I add to what you're saying, Super so Yes, I agree with you. But you have to also realize that it's a different, complete different government that was put in place that enacted that law. And within that government, I think it was during Fasho last time, they were very stakeholder uh, heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they were very, you know that they were very uh, stakeholder yeah, heavy. Yeah. Even the industry I was in, the Dredgers Association, they always made sure that within the different uh, markets and different uh, capital uh, points, okay. that they were always in, um, <clears throat> they always got the buy-in 
of the different yeah, industries. Yes, yeah. they did. They always did. They had regular monthly meetings. In fact, I always wondered, is this a government or is this a, a, a House of Reps uh, surgery as they have in the UK? He, he was always making that in interface with uh, the people. So you can't really blame that kind of, uh, with, those kind, with, with that kind of uh, heavy stakeholder uh, mm -hmm. involvement with, with this current dispensation, which we have seen less stakeholder which, involvement. Which, so so, so in yeah. summary, what I'm saying is that I agree with this you. level of engagement should mm -hmm. have gone on. Mm -hmm. you know, to properly, because I know there's a problem the government is trying to solve, which we all well, agree There's a flip side to it. I don't want us to uh, dwell on this too much, but it is the topical uh, issue at the moment. Yeah. Um, there's, there's the part about the, the people that are, the, the economic, um, you know, lash back that mm -hmm. we'll have from uh, the ban on the Okadas and KK. And some persons are saying that um, the people that came into this business, they also have, they have alternatives that they can fall back on. The jury's out on that. I think the jury's out <laughs> the on jury's that out well. on I don't that. think, I mean, and the alternative there, there have been so many memes. The one meme I remember is uh, there's a horse <laughs> that yes, collapsed on the that way. That collapsed on the way, and then they made him. Like, there's a they reference to yes, exactly. I'm sure all of you have oh, yeah, seen the meme. <laughs> so from all right, to Yabra. let's move on to other headlines okay. this morning. Uh, the community police and federal government constables won't get salary. It's voluntary. That's on community policing, and uh, they're saying the recruitment not for the unemployed, but for professionals. So do you see professionals actually um, getting engaged with this? I mean, I mean, I don't know what they are referring to as professional. If they're talking about semi-skilled workers or people that have, have some kind of financial, uh, some, some, something to fall back on, possibly. But at the end of the day, you have to be very careful because where there is no hope, people are willing to do any and everything. You know, so you have to be very careful in terms of who you select to have that person. Before you have, before you know it, you'll have jungle justice, mm -hmm. and you'll have all kinds of different, uh, what they call those people, that, that uh, you know, you have different kind of uh, criminal, criministic intentions if it's not well uh, managed. Okay, let me talk about the um, a police to impound vehicles using siren illegally. Uh, we also have, um, I know an ex-governor who had a killer squad, that's uh, San uh, Falano speaking uh, there. And then we also have uh, Obasaki Rights IG demands a Shomale's arrest prosecution. Take your pick. Um, I think <laughs> I want to talk about the police um, trying to impound vehicles with sirens, uh, with um, special plate numbers and spy. Um, I think that, again, we need to become, we need to be a stronger institution. So, um, there's a reason, for whatever reason, sometime in the history of this country, we started to, you know, allow the elites to have special plate numbers, like police plate numbers, allow, I mean, I think the covering of numbers came from the military, which used to signify that if um, a, a the, 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 the military, uh, the owner of the official car is not in the car, then the plate number has to be covered to show that it is not in the car. I don't know where they learned that from, but I think that the civilians then picked it up. I keep saying it that we're military hangover. <laughs> so if the police are now trying to cop that, I think, you know, uh, as part of the little things that we have to do to bring back security into the country is a welcome development. And I just think that, again, irrespective of who you are, once we have stronger institutions, it will be easier to implement things like this and it won't be making front line. Okay, I, I, okay. You I want just wanted to, to just quickly go to the, uh, there's a, I think the headlines still talk the about the 18. price oil, the oil of, um, price going down. Yeah, budget on the threat as oil price sinks to $54. Yeah, I'm just going to make a quick comment on that, especially in the wake of the passing of the Finance Act. You know, and I know that one of the reasons, one of the one of the backbone, or the reason, one of the reasons that they were so um, optimistic about the act is that they, they felt that they would be able to fall back on uh, the revenue from oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you cannot fall back on revenue on oil where you have so many variables and so many moving parts. First of all, there's, there's no certainty in terms of the number of oil barrels produced per day, and secondly, the the, where, where the price is set out of your own hand and outside um, your own control, there's no certainty in that as well. So it, this is not a surprise to me, and I'm sure to most uh, Nigerians who have been monitoring very closely the trends, especially in oil pricing. There's so many talking points on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Um, I don't know if we can flash it on the screen again so you see um, the story that you have it. Um, the Kaduna bombing suspect gave his name as Mohammed, not Samuel. Uh, 
uh, that uh, there is a controversy. I don't know if you guys followed that story. I did. Uh, Khan says uh, the person was not a Christian. I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, put the media on the spot here. So where did they get the first name? Because I saw the name on social media. So yeah, I saw the story they, yesterday, but I did, didn't read it in full. Yeah, because the conversation was like, oh, the person, the uh, the suspected bomber was not. A Muslim, and you know, and the conversation was going in that direction. So, um, asking why, you know, media could not clarify the right name, and Kana has to be the one to start doing it after the effect. And many people, you know, will catch, you know, the negative story always fly faster than mm. you know the real truth. Yes, yeah. so I, I, I think I owe the media responsible. Yeah, well, in the day of meeting do. targets and being the first to break the news, sometimes the mistakes like that happen, unfortunate. And then one just picks it, especially if it's a trusted media, mm -hmm. one just picks it. We and do have a it, huge yeah. responsibility, like, yeah, like, yeah. like you uh, rightly yeah. noted. Yeah. All right, there are other headlines here. The Savage Chiefs National Assembly submits proposal. Buhari promises change. Uh, that's um, <laughs> another one. And then uh, traders lament again uh, in Lagos State as the government demolishes uh, Kanta Goa market. Uh, this one probably, uh, we don't have the details. Uh, I don't know yes. if you know about that. We, well, I mean... Do you know anything about it? No, no, I but I, I was going to just uh, also refer to the, uh, I think the quote from AFDB as well in, regarding the, it's actually... 18 states was hit by poverty. Yes, I don't know the states that he's talking about, but I can, talk, I can categorically, categorically refer to what was said during uh, the different talks in Davos, which just happened, I think, two weeks ago. And uh, I think we had uh, uh, Mrs. Okonje Wella's perspective on this. And... Knowing full well what we know about the unemployment rate in Nigeria and knowing full well what, what our uh, economic climate is at the moment, it's only going to get worse. We just have to find ways around it. And, and because it's Nigeria, Nigeria makes up at least 10% of the entire African population. And guess what? Africa is the second largest continent in terms of population in the whole world. So you can imagine the kind of center, um, center um, um, the kind of force we have to deal with in terms of hitting poverty. China was able to do it, India was able to do it, so can we. <laughs> okay, if we continue looking at all the interesting headlines on the nation, we'll move on to another one. So let's take a look, <laughs> quick look at what's on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Um, Buhari under pressure meets with Lawan Gbadabia Mila over insecurity. That's it on your screen with two mm. riders. Nigeria is... Is in a state of um, okay. Ndume is speaking there. Is in a state, a state of, of war. Nigeria is in a state of war. Says Ndume. Citizens kidnapped, uh, prized like animals. That's um, a heartbreaking one. Um, again, your thoughts. Uh, to... um, um, the the insecurity issue in the country is is now as is is a major is a major major problem. Um, it's sad that as citizens of a country like Nigeria, on a daily basis, we are almost living with fear. Uh, we live with fear from molestation from security forces. We live with fear from, you know, um, the evils of the people of the underworld. Um, I, I, I think that it's about time that we look at the security apparatus of the country from a systematic point of view. You see, this conversation about uh, FG constable to get salary, not to get salary, I think it's... It's very disturbing that we cannot even, it, it's starting to look like we cannot properly think through a system or a process that works. Because if, if you're arguing about who is going to get paid and who is not going to get paid, we've not even argued about who is going to do what and to what level. You know, where's intelligence gathering and all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm very worried this about this. This headline is actually the most disturbing out of everything we've seen so far for three reasons. Yes, we talk about insecurity within Nigeria as well. So even if you, have, you feel threatened and you feel that you're, you're not secure and you want to make your way to the out, outside the shores, mm -hmm. based on the uh, executive order that uh, Donald, Trump. Donald Trump put in place, we still fall under that category mm -hmm. as well. We have been told to go back to our countries, more or less, from an American standpoint. Mm -hmm. And it's important because even when we're raising it, uh, the query, we're raising it as a query to them or raising it as a as in, you know, in dissatisfaction with them, they, it was very easy for them to have it, to defend their position yeah. because they said that a state of insecurity in Nigeria is compromised. And if it's compromised, and we are not able to identify the miscreants in Nigeria, how are they going to be? How are they going to be able to trace them? How are we going to be able to work with them as a partner in terms of um, or, um, sorting out any kind of insecurity, insecurity they have in the country? Issues. Okay, a, a so, quick look at this one about uh, the coronavirus. Chinese government to work with Nigeria, others against coronavirus. Uh, that's it. I don't know if you can put it on the screen. So. Uh, we 
we see uh, the Guardian newspaper I'm back at it again. Um, we also have uh, Edo government rights, IGDSS, seeks a shameless immediate arrest. Your quick thoughts on that. So we, um, we have um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still asking myself what um, the Chinese government is really going to be doing with Nigeria to solve the issue of coronavirus because there's only one solution I see here. Let's work on getting the you know, um, 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 the, 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 the vaccine for it. And I'm asking myself, Nigeria has been dealing with Lassa fever for God knows how long and we've not found a solution to. We have an outbreak that we've been managing for over six um, six months. So uh, we're, we're careless here. Let me add to what he's saying as well. We're, I think we're just living in denial. At the end of the day, only six countries and developed countries for that matter have been, have been, have been named as countries that can deal and contain the coronavirus. Yeah. We have refused to close the Chinese borders. We need to close our borders to them. I know it sounds almost impossible, but we need to close our borders. And if we cannot close our borders, then we are always going to be at risk of, uh, of a mass infection. I'm afraid that's where we have to pass <laughs> the conversation this morning. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on for the program. Me. Thank you. Thank you for listening. All right, that's a wrap for the newspaper review this morning. We're back again tomorrow morning with all the latest headlines. And of course, we have guests helping us make sense of it. I hope you have been enlightened this morning. Go grab a paper, read the details, knowing for um, what's going on in our country. Thanks again for watching. My name is Felicity Ezewike.